This episode is in association with Tracks for Africa, Tackla Products, Lacey, Indieflate, and my Patreons. In the previous episode, we spent an amazing four nights in the Mohoto area and then started making our way to Linyanti. I know this is a long episode, but you will want to stay until the end to see something truly incredible. We got caught out on our timing and had to make a serious push for Lenyanti, which is not ideal. straight to Linyanti we've been warned that we won't be able to do with uh, do the road to Linyanti at the, the normal road at the moment and I can believe it because the sandy conditions is unlike something I've ever seen in Botswana before it's it's obviously late in the season in the dry season we're gonna approach spring now but the sand is just next level thick around Savuti was absolutely insane so yeah, we've made the decision, it's a lot longer a distance and time-wise, but um, we want to get to Linyanti. So we've gone to Goha Gate, we're almost there now, and uh, then we will turn left towards Linyanti, which will be another 34 kilometers. Jono, are you rattled, shaken, and bent? I'm like a martini, shaken and not stirred. <laughs> Ready still to go. What an adventure, brother. What an adventure. Stop. What What are you saying about these roads, bro? <laughs> yes. Yes, bro. As I, I just, yeah. Look, if I can survive this, I think I can survive most things with this trailer and this 4x4. Bro. Today's been uh, hard yards driving here. I think that these cars have taken a beating, to say the least. And I mean, I'm just so impressed with the fact that they could get us out of these situations. Stuck twice? Hmm. Out twice. Out twice. First time Eddie took me out, second time I took myself out. Mm -hmm. So, Things like this can get you down. It's been a long day. Sorry, Jono. I really didn't do enough research on how long it takes from Mopoto um, to Lenyanti. There's not a lot out there about it, about this route. Really sorry, Jono. But anyways, we are in our cars with our trailers on a Botswana sand road while the sun is going down in Botswana in the Chobe National Park. So while these things can be frustrating, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Magic. This road, however, is the second most difficult I've done. After Fonseil's Pass, the sand is relentless and it was too difficult to film. I tell you, that was no joke. Woo. 
this 200 series was working hard 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 my goodness but we made it here before sunset let's find out how Jono is I tell you don't underestimate that drive this time of year August or oh, end of July that was intense I tell you I've done some drives but that was up there definitely got damaged somewhere are you feeling <laughs> my man <laughs> that was the hardest 4x4 -four I've done in my life that's the hardest drive I've ever done bro I'm sorry yeah like hard, with bro. a trailer with a trailer it's insane. but you did flipping well my no, man well done bro yeah you. no Thank my you. man you did well uh, rookie errors <laughs> not, <laughs> not rookie errors yes, that sand yes. is no joke yes second gear flat four and a half thousand revs scared as hell hello Hi. how are you how are you good was the drive worth it well, just on how stunning the road to the campsite is, I think it's definitely worth it. Hi, this is Raymond uh, from SQL. i uh, here with my clients, uh, Edward and John. Uh, welcome to Lignanity, guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah. My man, how's that for a view? Unbelievable. I mean, was it worth it? 100% worth it. Look at this, guys. This is the view from campsite number three. That is the Lignanti Swamp. Right there. How insane is that? We've got a Goliath here and there. This is our campsite. With our home away from home set up, we enjoy Lignanti magic. We've been eating like kings this whole trip, and tonight is no different. What's on the menu, Jono? Um, tonight we're going to have some fish and chips, and we've had a very long, exciting drive. So we're going to just be a little bit careful, um, and we're just going to actually chill out tonight. Let the air fry do the work. We're going to sit around the fire, maybe have some good discussions about the drive and today, and what we thought about it and uh yeah let the air fry do the work here we're gonna have some proper crumbed hake cajun hake uh likely dust cajun hake with um with chips so yeah let it happen there's nothing wrong with mixing up the methods of cooking as much as we love brying the change is more than welcome as we sit under this magnificent tree and enjoy the nightlife Another day, I'm wearing a different jacket, the same jacket. <laughs> it's just a problem at the moment. 
we only have a limited amount of clothes and you can't take 800 jackets with us or 14 different jackets. If it gets cold in the evening we use one jacket for the for the smoke etc and the rest of the day we have a different jacket for that. Ed taught me that so yeah anyway so if you're judging me out there that's fine. Um, let's look at the food. Food's ready. We have our hake which looks pretty good if you ask me. I've been to some incredible campsites, but the staff and the location make this one of the best. When you're camping at a spot for a number of days, just peg your ground sheets and awning down. We always do this, and luckily we did, as we had a huge gust of wind come up in the evening. No need to use our showers, as the Lignanti campsite has solar-powered showers, toilets, and running water. Right, good morning, and it is freezing cold here on the Lignanti Swamp. That is the Lignanti Swamp behind me. How stunning is this campsite? I tell you, but it is very cold. But we arrived here at sunset yesterday, just took it all in and uh, it's got to be, I know I say that about a lot of places, but it's got to be one of the most beautiful campsites I've ever stayed in and locations I've ever driven through to get to a campsite. There were these massive leadwood trees. I mean, it was just incredible. And the morning chorus here, we got the crested barbet, had the Varro eagle owl going off in the distance, the red-billed Franklin. There's a Goliath heron behind me there. The hippos and hyenas and elephants were going absolutely crazy last night. Just what a stunning place, really. I hope we can get another night here because we've only booked two. If we can get three, that'll be amazing. Because I don't think I'll ever get tired of that view. Ablution blocks, as always, SKL, 10 out of 10. We had a boiling hot shower last night, which was amazing. And this tree, I'm not sure what tree it is. Could be a leadwood or jackalberry. Uh, that's over our campsite. It's so big that I can't even get it in the photographs. It is huge. It dwarfs the cars and the trailers. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking. Just want to tell you guys how amazing this place is and uh, how amazing the morning chorus is. Got a bit of work to do today, but hopefully this afternoon we can head out on a drive. But I don't think you really want to drive when that is your view from your campsite. Just amazing. The Lignanti, a new place for me and absolutely spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. With 
my least favorite bird, the Egyptian goose, ruining the other nice sounds. It's time for a coffee on a two degrees Celsius morning in Botswana. Cheers. This is magic. Let's see what our trail cams picked up last night. After a long day yesterday, we decided to spend today in camp, doing some maintenance on the vehicles and enjoying this amazing campsite. Well, good morning. Where's those cobwebs? My oh, man, they're all over the show. I was up early. I it? saw on the trail cam. Oh. Our fridges have been working perfectly on this adventure, allowing us to keep everything fresh so we can enjoy breakfast like this even late on in the trip. Right, so uh, today we are chilling in camp, enjoying the Lignanti campsite. And because we're spending the whole day in camp, I'm gonna put the Red Ox solar blanket on the bonnet of the 200. The battery was down at about 45% this morning, which isn't bad considering it ran the lights the whole night. But because we're not gonna drive, I'm gonna put the 240 watt solar blanket up so it can get some charge back into the lithium battery through the Manager 30.
We prefer campsites without electricity, but you need to be prepared. A good set of panels, batteries, chargers, and a decent inverter makes life much more enjoyable for us in this very remote location. With the fires burning in Namibia, this fish eagle treats us to some amazing moments. Creating these videos isn't easy. It's what I love, but it's certainly not a holiday. Sometimes you need to take a day off. And remember why you are here. It's good for the mind, body, and soul. It doesn't get any better than this.
Right, it's another early morning, another freezing morning, well not that cold, 5 degrees, alongside the Lignanti and uh, the lions were going off last night. They were close by, so we're going to head along the river and see if we can't find them. Just what a stunning campsite, eh? Just absolutely stunning, I tell you. <sighs> Beautiful. So the combination of lions and hyenas and elephants through camp and around camp doesn't get any better. The only thing that could make this morning better is a nice cup of coffee. And I've got one. So, happy days. Hmm.
some incredible scenery alongside the Lignanti. But unfortunately the drive is not long, as there are two private concessions on either side of the campsite, where we are not permitted to drive. We presume they are hunting concessions, as the animals were very skittish. So that is most of the work we had to get done today done and now it is time to enjoy the incredible sunset here at Lignanti. The sun goes down right over the marsh in front of your campsite. It is just amazing really just incredible. Now if you guys are wondering how we're doing this work and staying connected with the outside world something very exciting has recently arrived. Uh, Jono managed to pick one up just before, literally the morning before we left and that is Starlink. It is a satellite dish. I'll show you the guy over there and we were worried about whether it works or not. It works. Uh, it battles with trees so you just got to find an open spot and it is insane. The speeds at which you can work with here is just amazing. So we can literally have zoom calls or whatever business we need to get done out here in the middle of nowhere we still brought the sat phone just in case for emergencies but this is a game changer I promise you this is a game changer just be careful now that you have signal and uh, data out here it can easily run away with you and you can t it can take away from being out here and actually getting away from that sort of stuff but we've had to work so it's just one of those things I think it's amazing it's reliable it's amazing and um, yeah I think it'll change the game it means you can stay out here for longer if you need to work on the road it's a solution you can work 100% speeds are amazing honestly really a very very good product Here at Lignanti, and it's time to enjoy that peaceful scene with a local Botswana beer, St. Louis. St. Louis on the Lignanti while the sun's going down. This is my happy place, and life doesn't get any better than this for me, eh?
We unfortunately leave Linyanti and head towards Kasani. The drive to Linyanti will prevent a lot of people from coming here and it's not a drive to be taken lightly. But if you are willing to do it, you will not be disappointed. The lack of drives was a problem, but just sit in the amazing campsites and enjoy. Linyanti is the easier road of the two to Linyanti but it is not easy the sand is thick 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 now on the 200 series what I'm doing it's obviously going to be different between each car but I'm locking the gearbox in second and third gear so I cruise in third on the hard patches and then as soon as I see a sandy patch I change it down to second and it just builds up those revs and I'm keeping the revs between sort of three and a half four thousand revs through the sand i mean she's really working hard but it just gives me that ability to get out of trouble if i do feel the wheels are starting to spin it is a hectic road your car is taking an absolute smashing there's these massive elephant holes so you're trying to build up a bit of momentum and you smack these elephant holes bah bah and the bash plate on the car and the trailer is just taking an absolute smashing and uh, that's why you need good underbody protection. It's not just for rocks. There are Mopani stumps here that'll go straight through the sump, like it's nothing. So a good bash plate, I've got a Gobi X bash plate that actually also protects the transfer case. So make sure when you're coming here, you have good underbody protection and just adjust your driving style between second and third. Yeah, I've got a tough section coming up now. So just down to second, just gives me that little bit more revs and uh, should be good. Shame, this 200 is working hard, but that's why I bought it. I didn't buy it to drive around Sandton. So uh, yeah, it is 15 kilometers to the Goha gate turnoff. As we approach Kachikau, the road just got worse and worse to the point where it broke both shocks on the Echo 5. But we meet some good friends along the road, which is always a treat. Only a pleasure, only a pleasure. Eh? Now when we go up, can you come with us next? Like, <laughs> <six days? laughs> yeah, I know you'll be okay. Where are you going? Some lovely people. Are you good, my man? All good. Just got stuck, so we just winch them out. And we carry on. Sand's so bad, eh? But yeah, good to just help out. We hit our first tar road in 11 days as we head to a stopover point called Muchenje. It's not quite what we expected as we traded the elephants for cows. But if you're looking for a fenced campsite and tented camp that's clean and has everything you need, it's a really good option.
Right, so it's early morning here at Muchenje. It is a really nice place to stay, really. The, we stayed in these uh, little luxury tents. Absolute bargain. Jono spoiled us and got us two of them. And we are here on the Chobe floodplain. And really, uh, it's a pity the campsites are all full. It would have been really nice to camp here. But what we're actually going to do today, we've only got three nights left of the trip, unfortunately. I hate this time when it's coming to an end, but it has to come to an end. And uh, we're going to try, we haven't booked anywhere, except Mariti Bush Camps. Our last night will be at Mariti Bush Camps, which is just the other side of the South African border, Botswana South African border, Martins Drift. And that's really going to be nice to stay there. But the next two nights we're going to try and get at Ihaha Camp inside Chobe National Park. Uh, they didn't have availability when we tried to book, but we're going to pitch up there, see what they've got. If not, we'll head to Chobe Safari Lodge. But we are enjoying a cup of coffee here on the Chobe floodplain at Muchenje. Lovely place. And we'll see you in Chobe. quick stop outside Muchenje as we head into Chobi via the Ngoma Gate. Jono, what's the plans brother? We have just managed to get a spot at Ihaha, so let's go get there. Excited, a bit nervous. We may get attacked tonight, but apparently there's police out there. But yeah, I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. I mean, I think uh, Jay says there might be some lion in the camp, there maybe some leopard in the camp. Let's hope we can keep all those and toes and feet on the ground. Let's go. I've never stayed at Ihaha, so it's always nice to visit new places, but we are a little concerned.
So we're here at a rather sad but uh, realistic aspect of Africa and uh, yeah a bunch of vultures on a baby elephant carcass shame man but this is Africa it's harsh out here but an awesome sighting nonetheless this Chobe River it's a hot spot I'm telling you what a day what a day to be alive Yes, it's sad, but it's part of nature, and it's amazing to experience scenes like this. The tracks next to the river can get a bit gnarly and washed away, but pay attention and you'll be fine. Thank you. 
So that was an amazing drive, a little right next to the Chobe. And then it sort of takes you back onto this graded dirt road. And I think this is the road to Yohaha. I'm using Tracks for Africa on my Garmin GPS, which keeps losing consciousness. GPS keeps on turning on and off. So I think it's time. Had it for nine years, no, 10 years now. Probably time to replace it. But what a drive along the Chobe, hey? This, this is amazing. But we are going to get to Ihaha and then set up camp. Cumulo Nimbus clouds, a dirt road, and baobab trees. Magic. Just to put this into perspective, this is one game drive along the Chobe to Ihaha. The variety of game is truly amazing. And for those wondering where Chobi's 150,000 elephant are, well, they're still here.
As we approach Ihaha, I must say that unfortunately, this is a campsite that's a victim of crime. People come across from Namibia and break into your vehicle and approach you with weapons. It doesn't happen every day and there's no guarantee, but it's not good. But as we get to the campsite, we realize why people love Ihaha. So we're just taking a little drive uh, <laughs> along the river you had Yohaha. And I'll tell you the scene is just something else. It's almost out of a movie. Elephant, zebra, giraffe, impala, open build stalk, pelicans, yellow build stalk. I don't want this trip to end. I promise you it's actually very very sad man I just love Botswana I absolutely love Botswana and it's my first time at Ihaha and uh, what a place what a setting what a campsite wow right now we're gonna enjoy the sunset at Ihaha you just can't, I'm sorry, Botswana, it is amazing. 
Why do you keep coming back, Ed? Why always a Botswana video? Go do somewhere else. Yeah. I do want to go to Zimbabwe. I do want to go to Zambia. I'm a very wildlife appreciative person. So I love a place. Wildlife isn't everything and anything. But it is important to me because I love it. So you just can't beat Botswana. I'm sorry, you can't. It's incredible. Just incredible.
How's that sky? It's absolutely And just when we thought it couldn't get any better, we had some lions walk right past our campsite. The bathrooms at Ihaha are in fair condition. You see that they try as hard as they can, but people not cleaning after themselves is the problem once again. That mentality of I'm paying so I don't have to do anything doesn't work out here. Just be decent and clean up after yourself. Yes, it's expensive and they should be upgraded, but still. Once again, I pay full price to stay here and don't have to say anything nice about Ihaha. But come prepared and you will have an amazing time. And that's exactly what Jono and I are having. This has been an incredible trip with Jono. Nothing phases him and the positive attitude towards everything is so refreshing. He's also taught me so much and he's a great mate. 
Thank you for everything, legend. Oh man, Jono, how's your stay been here at the Ha Ha, bro? Amazing, absolutely amazing. I tell you, it's been a tale of two cities. Uh, sorry about my hair sticking up with the wind, but it's been a tale of two cities. Um, I think it's like the Garden of Eden out here with the amount of game we've seen. But on the other hand, it's been ruined by humans as usual. Um, we were speaking to our neighbors and, um, you know, they when I asked them had they had any trouble they said with the leopard and the lion and we're like that's great we wouldn't mind having trouble with a leopard or a, or a lion but we've got guys from Namibia coming across here and attacking people so last night we were a little bit nervous um, with our stuff and um, in general they look for camera equipment and uh, finances well, well money or whatever you've got with you and whatever they can take um, and they come with knives and they are armed and they'll break into your cars and they'll try and harass you a little bit so we haven't had that experience so far, so thank God. So it's really been beautiful, actually. It's been very, very pleasant. But uh, you just got to be aware of the dangers out here, I think, uh, more than anything else. Tale of two cities, humans, bad people. Mm -hmm. And what have you made us for lunch? Some ostrich burgers in the air fryer. And uh, this guy's been a great workhorse out here. Hey, we've had fish, we've had um, no, ostrich burgers, we've had chicken hot, wings. Chicken wings. And chips chips yeah potato wedges in here so yeah, absolute game changer for us um, especially after a long day and a long drive you really don't want to sit down and uh, wait for me to uh, sort of uh, thaw and you know yeah this is just great and for those of you who are wondering why john has got his headphones on he's been grafting the whole morning using starlink how much of a game changer has that been yeah completely so this is not what I do, and I'd like to do this to be honest, but I spend most of my time uh, in a theatre um, operating on people or teaching or lecturing, and uh, there's a lot of work that uh, needs to be done and admin that needs to be done, and often I get anxiety being out here knowing what I've got to get back to. So a little bit of work every day um, hasn't actually distracted me too much from the beauty, and um, it actually has eased my anxiety having the Starlink with us, to be honest. And yeah, game changer, another game changer. And give us a review on those Bang & Olufsen headphones that you got on there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next level.
what you're saying, Jono. Uh, just, I can't tell you how beautiful this actually is. Like, the eye cannot behold the number of elephants there are here. The interaction between groups, and I think they're different herds here. And when they get too close to each other, you hear them starting to fight a little bit. And it's just absolutely vocal. It's like just, yeah, it's unimaginable actually. Unimaginable. And just look at the back of the elephant. Impala, zebra, kudu, like just unimaginable. Yeah, it's really the Garden of Eden here. Yeah. yeah, so we're actually supposed to go for afternoon drive. But just look at the scene unfolding in front of camp. I've never seen so many elephant in my life. There's what have got to be, 10 herds here? Yeah? just amazing and look how close they are to camp so i think we're just gonna chill here let the animals come to us because we wanted to enjoy one last sunset away from camp and because i didn't plug my solar panel in properly so ran my battery flat we headed out on one more amazing drive in botswana Words just never do scenes like this justice. Tell you guys <laughs> what a drive and you come back to your campsite and uh, this is what you see yesterday when you got back to camp it was lion but today elephant and lots of elephant right by our camp simply magic i'm gonna enjoy a saint louis and this and we'll see you guys around the fire but uh, just tell me how do you beat this how do you beat botswana well there is one way to beat it 
and that's to have a predator encounter in camp. We dump footage and air up before the long drive tomorrow, and then something truly incredible happens. So you guys are not going to believe what just happened after I filmed the whole thing that we saw leopard and civet. You're not going to believe it. I uh, had the camera plugged into dump footage and all of a sudden this noise literally right behind Jono's trailer, maybe two meters away. Excruciating noise. He ran with the torch, I ripped my camera out. The leopard tried to kill the civet right next to our campsite. Literally, I only managed to get it on slow-mo, I ripped the camera out and stuff. But literally right here by the medallion, this leopard tried to kill the civet. Eventually it got away, but the leopard is roaming around. Be very careful, Eddie. Ha ha. That leopard was on top of us and we didn't even know. <sighs> but shell shock, really. Civet got away, but it's damaged. It's badly damaged. That leopard had it down for about 30 seconds. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Jono, what are you saying, bro? No, seriously, like, uh, I've had encounters with elephant before, but this is just like, yeah, I mean, we could have been taken very quickly. Both of us looking at our laptops, dumping footage, and it was less than five meters away from us. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. After that encounter, we enjoyed the more peaceful game as well. John, I'll just show the viewers exactly what's happened here. So in this bush here, so this is the trailer. Yeah. So here I am doing a little bit of work, um, dumping some footage, having a look at a few things, have my headlight on, feel very safe because we're back to back. We've got a car here, we've got a car there. We, we think we're okay, but there's a big gap here. And this gap is exactly where it all happened. Right here in this bush, right here, she catches us the civet and runs around the corner here and we just see dust and we just hear this poor civet like sort of whimpering and Ed grabs his camera and what we see is she takes him down here and we actually thought that was it but he managed to get away which I'm actually very surprised at but yes he's damaged bad you could hear him whimpering away so yeah she's still out here into the night here she's 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 somewhere up here we make a huge push all the way from ihaha to moriti bush camps just on the south african side of the martins drift border post
been an amazing adventure and it's nice to come back with such little damage on the rigs. From the Fortuna and the 200 to the Metallion and the Echo, these rigs have been amazing. you saying oh man I'm depressed proper depressed this was the most magical experience of my life to be honest some people might call it escapism and maybe it is escapism but I tell you it's just been the best trip of my life the experiences with you and the experiences with the car and getting stuck in water and in sand and then Yes, almost get, getting taken out by a leopard. <laughs> it's just been, yeah, absolutely phenomenal there. Eh? I'm sad because, you know, getting, um, this, this, this is the biggest killer for me. Um, and work is the biggest killer. And in this trip, I didn't touch this phone. And it was actually so pleasant not to be on the phone the whole time. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be in the thick of it doing ERCPs again, running around, looking after patients again, which I, I mean, I love doing, but sure, it takes it out of you, eh? it takes it out of you, the rat race. And I don't know when I'm gonna be able to do this again. You know, I can't see as far as, you know, the next case sometimes, but um, this has just been an absolute treat, absolute pleasure to be out here. And like, honestly, to be with you, Ed, it's been a privilege. Unfortunately, we only spent one night at Moriti, and it looks incredible. We can't wait to be back here. So, that time has come. We stayed at an absolutely amazing Moriti Bush campsite last night. We stayed in their wild camp, but I think they've got five campsites. Some of them are along, right along the river. What a spot. It is literally the perfect stop over to Botswana because it's right by the Martins Drift border. So, you know, if you leave Joburg late, which often happens with work, this is the perfect stop over. Or if you're coming from Durban, wherever, you know, it's just such a good distance. You can get to far in Botswana the next day. But yeah, we're on our way home. And if I tell you, I don't wanna leave. This trip has just been incredible. One of the best. Thank you, Jono, for everything. Thank you to all the amazing people we met along the way. All the supporters and watch people that watch the channel. Thank you for saying, how's it? And uh, what a trip. What a trip. I feel the urge to go back to Botswana already, plan the next adventure. What does Botswana mean to me? Words, just can't, I can't describe it in words. Really, I can't. It is such a special place to me and I'm sure to a lot of people. A lot, I get criticized a lot in the comments for just going back to Botswana, but it, it's what makes me happy. I just love every aspect. I'm a very Wildlife isn't the be all and end all of a trip, but it's important to me. I love being behind the camera and experiencing wildlife. So Botswana, in my opinion, you can't beat, you know, and look, it's always a time of year dependent thing. This time of year is fantastic for game viewing. I mean, look at what we saw, but the roads are in bad condition, very bad condition. They didn't have a good wet season. So this is the roughest trip I've done in the 200 series. Um, not the roughest trip overall in Namibia was, but definitely in the 200, she's taken a smashing, but no problems whatsoever. How's that? Just amazing. I'm so happy to be done with car problems. You know, the thing is, people say, oh, you know, um, it's part of the adventure when things go wrong. And yes, it is. 100%. You have to adapt, but it costs so much money to repair that it actually stops you going on other adventures. You can't go on other other adventures so yeah i'm so happy echo 5 one or two little things but also brilliant jono's car and trailer has just done incredibly well as well um it's just yeah 
so nice not to have massive things to fix when we get home and massive expenses and that's one of the good things about Botswana look it can happen but so happy with the 200 and uh, after everything it's gone through just shows you what an amazing car it is but as we take the drive to Johannesburg I'm gonna leave this one here who knows where adventure will take us next but I think the next one might be to Mozambique so I'll see you guys then thank you for watching this series and until the next adventure cheers